Hi, this is a video about um, the scroll view and the segmented controller. In the last couple videos, we set up a simple segmented controller that switches between two pages, but sim simply scrolling the, um, the sc this scroll view here. Let's give it a try and see what it looks like. Uh, actually, let me launch it here in the simulator. And it looks like this. You can click here, and it slides, right? Okay, so why don't we do a couple things in the next video. I had a question here where um, someone had asked how to get the segmented, the, the segment and the segmented controller to change to match the page that you're on. Well, in my example, I easily sidestep that question by making the scroll view not scroll as you drag it, right? So first of all, to get the scroll view to drag, what we'll do is we'll find the scroll view here in Storyboard. Um, select it, and you can see it's got under the scroll view options here. It has a scrolling option, and scrolling enabled allows it to scroll when you when you drag it or swipe it, right? So if we turn that on, I can see that I can drag it now. But as I drag to page two, the second segment doesn't become selected, right? So how can we figure that out? Well, first of all, we need to know when the scroll view is scrolling. Okay, and so conveniently the scroll view has a delegate method. So what we'll do is we'll switch over to view controller. And what we'll do at the very top here is we'll add a UI scroll view delegate to our list of, of um, uh, protocols, right? So we're going to declare ourselves as a scroll view delegate. And that will allow us to accept messages from the scroll view, okay? Let's also put in a couple um, comments here. I'll say mark IB outlets, right? And we have an outlet for the scroll view. And then we'll make another one here IB actions, right? And then we have an action here for the segment and controller. We're going to improve on this too in this video or maybe the next video. Um, so, one other thing. First of all, to set up the UI scroll view delegate, we'll have to declare this class view controller as a delegate. And we can do that here in view did load. You can actually do this in storyboard too, but I think I'm going to do it here just to make it a little more clear what's going on. So what we'll do is we'll say scroll view dot delegate equals self, right? And if we don't have the, um, the delegate declared up here, we will get an error. Okay, if we try this, right, it'll say, hey, you're not a UI scroll view delegate, so you're not eligible to be set to this property, right? Anyway, so there we go, right? And maybe we'll put a mark here. View life cycle, right? And now let's add a delegate method. So uh, I'll put another mark here. We'll say scroll view delegate, right? And then we'll add one of the delegate methods. So what kind of delegate methods do we have, right? Well, we can get a list of them by typing scroll view. So you don't even have to type function. You just say scroll view or just start typing scroll view, and you'll see a list. All the scroll view methods start with the word scroll view, right? So the one that we want is did scroll, and you could try some of these others. Um, essentially, did scroll, we get a message every time the scroll view moves, okay? So this will be good because as you're dragging, it will want the segmented control to change while you drag, okay? So uh, what happens with the scroll view um, did scroll method? Well, essentially, it just tells us that the scroll view is moving. So the next thing we need to do is we need to figure out which page it's on, and really, the scroll view doesn't so much have pages as it has a width, and then it knows the width of the view, and as you drag it, it'll snap to view, you know, um, units, I guess, right? So, you know, for example, if the view was 100 pixels wide, but the content of the scroll view was 300 pixels, when the scroll view is paging, as you drag, when it gets close to, let's say, 100, when it's closest to 100, it'll snap to 100 when you stop dragging, okay? And if you drag again and you get closer to 200 than 100, then it'll snap to 100. So essentially, like the view area, if it's 100 
wide, then um, that'll kind of set the, the snapping of it, right? Okay. So let's figure out which page we're on. So we'll say let width equal um, scroll view dot frame dot size. I know this is a little ridiculous. Dot width, right? So that's how wide the scroll view is. Okay. This is not the entire content of the scroll view, though. This is just the visible area. So like I said, if our, if our visible area was 100 pixels wide, um, then this would be 100. You know, if, I had a, if the content of the scroll view was actually 1,000 pixels wide, you know, essentially it would have 10 pages worth of information, then you know, this width is still going to be 100. Okay? Okay, so how do we get the page? Let's say let page equal um, scroll view dot content offset. So this says how far we've moved, okay? And this actually returns a CG point, right, which contains an X and a Y, so you can find out how much you've offset on the, on the vertical and the horizontal. Um, our scroll view only scrolls horizontal, so uh, maybe we'll just get the X, okay? So the distance that we move, right, is how far offset we are. So, for example, if our scroll view is 300 pixels wide and it scrolls 300 pixels, we can divide by the width to get the number of, of the page that we're on, right? Uh, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll do exactly that. I'll divide by the width. And then why don't we just print this page number out? So we'll say page colon is the page variable, right? So let's give that a try. And what we're going to look at is we're going to look for this comment here, this print statement in the console down here, right? So you can see as I'm dragging, I'm getting messages, right? So I'm getting the uh, scroll view did scroll, right? And as I drag this way, you can see the number is going up you know, 0.6, and then when I get all the way to page 2, it snaps to 0.1, okay? When I go back, I'll get 0. And if I had a third page, as I drag, it would go to a larger number until we got to number 2, right? Okay? So uh, so there we go. So how do we get this to um, set the, uh, the segment up here? Well, what we'll do is this. Now, here's the thing. The segmented control has a selected segment index property and setting this sets which segment is currently active and asking for the value or getting the value tells you which one is is currently selected right and then the numbers are zero for the first segment and one for the second segment and two for the third one right so what we'll do is we'll say let's comment this out because we don't need to print the number out all the time what we'll do is we need oh actually you know i realize we need an outlet for the segmented control let's go get that so I'll option click on storyboard and I'll find the segmented control. It's here. The outline view is good for this. You could also grab it here. This is it in the in the visual view, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another outlet here. So I'll control drag or right click and drag into my view controller and I'll say segmented control. Okay? And now we've got an outlet. So now we can go down here. So I've got my outlet up there. And I'll go here and I'll say um, segmented control dot selected segment index equals page, right? Now I'm going to have a problem here. It'll give me an error because selected segment index is an integer, an int, right? And page is a CG float. And the reason this is a CG float is because width is a CG float and the X here is a CG float. So when we do math with two CG floats, we, you know, we get a CG float answer, right? So what can we do? Why don't we do this? Why don't we say int um, page and that will convert page to an int and then we can set it as the selected index. Let's give it a try. So we'll test that simulator. And now when I drag, you can see the second segment is highlighted and now the first one's highlighted, right? And then we can still animate them. Okay, so, so that's the first half of this. I'm going to stop the video here and then I'll add a second video um, 
later. And what we'll do is we'll improve the function here so it'll work with so this will work with any number of pages very easily without us having to write more code. And then we'll also improve on the way that this works. And I'll point out a small flaw in our system so far, and we'll improve that later. Okay. But anyway, thanks for watching, and I hope that's helpful.